<clears throat> okay, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and do the um, the activity we did today, kind of introducing significance tests. So here's the deal. Mr. Michael claims he's an 80% free throw shooter. To prove his skills, he shoots 53 throw, 53 throw, free throws and makes 32 shots. Is Mr. Mike exaggerating about say, his free throws on the line? Um, so in this case, Mr. Mike has shot 50. He made 32. That's a statistic. So that's a P hat. So P hat equals 32 out of 50. Mr. Mike is 64. So in this case, um, is 64% evidence enough to question his um, free throw shooting percentage? So the way we would need to look at this, we want to look at the population, we want to look at the parameter, we want to look at the sample, we want to look at the statistic. The population would be all free throws taken by Mr. Mike. And that parameter would be P. And in this case, we're going to say P naught equals 0.8. Mr. Mike is claiming that he's an 80% free throw shooter. He makes it eight out of every 10, four out of every five shots. Okay. Now we're going to look at the sample. The sample is the 50 free throws Mr. Mike took. And in this case, we're going to get a statistic. The statistic is P hat. P hat is statistic, P naught is parameter. And that's going to be that number I wrote up top, 32 out of 50, 64. So when I look at this, it's not 80%. It's a lot less than 80%. So what are two explanations why he only made 32 out of 50 shots? Well, one of them is, could be, He had a bad day, just wasn't feeling the free throws, didn't really do well. The other thing, um, I'm sorry, should be, the other thing is, um, yeah, so the first one is he had a bad day. The, the another, second one is he's lying. He's not an 80% free throw shooter. So what's gonna happen is, we're going to go with claim one. We're going to go that he's an 80% free throw shooter. He had a bad day, but he's actually an 80% 80, 80 free throw shooter. So what we're going to do is we're going to grant him his claim, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our investigation of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, first thing I want you to do is clear your calculator. So we do second plus seven, one, two. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put in our student ID number. So let's just say 1964578 store stat math, math Rob Rand. So now I'm just seeding my calculator so that you use your student ID number, whatever it may be. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate him taking um, 50, 50 free throws. Okay, so what's going to happen is. Um, I can go ahead and simulate him shooting. I'm going to do again, math, prob. I'm going to do randint. I'm going to say that um, I want to go from one to a hundred. And I want to go ahead and take one free throw. And what is going to happen is if he, if it's one to 80, I'm going to say that he made it. If it's 81 to 100, I'm going to say he missed it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this 50 times. I'm going to count, figure out how many times he does it. So he made it. I'm going to count his misses. Made it, made it, made it, made it. So one miss. And what we'll do is we'll repeat that process until we have taken 50 free throws. So in this case, what we've done so far is we've done, he is one for one, two for two, three for three, four for four, five for five. He's five for six. He is six for seven, seven for eight, eight for nine, nine for 10, 10 for 11. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
So what I did is I ended up with him making 45 of 50 shots. So my claim was that he is going to make 45 out of 50 shots. So I had him simulated that he made 90% of his shots. And what's going to happen is I'm going to collect this information from all of you. And what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a little dot plot on the board. And we're going to kind of see where does it fall. And again, what's going to happen is when I go to do this, we're going to get a sampling distribution that's going to fill in here. What will happen is when I, again, when I do this, the sampling distribution will show all of your samples of 50. So what will happen is we'll go ahead and we'll say, for me, I got a 90. So we're going to repeat that process. And what's going to happen is we're going to get a layout of all the possible shots you could take. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to center. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to center right here at 80%. And we're going to be able to calculate what standard deviation is even. We have a formula that allows us to do that. It's going to tell us like how many standard deviations we deal with. That, that is a formula you should be comfortable with at this point. It is going to be P. So in this case, 0.8 times 1 minus P, which is 0.8 divided by 50%. And what that's going to tell us is that we're going to have a uh, standard deviation of about 5.6%. So what that says is that every about five-ish, so this is a standard deviation here, this is going to be a standard deviation here, and this is going to be a standard deviation here. We're going to have about three. So what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and run this, and we're going to see where does 64% fall? I mean, 64% is down here. 64%, if I were to look at it in the calculator, if I would go ahead and figure it out, I'd say, well, he's shot 64%. He's claiming he was an 80% free throw shooter. That's 0 0.6, 0 0.16 below the average. I'm going to divide it by that standard deviation. And what I'm going to find out is, is that's about 2.8 standard deviations below average. That's significant. That's not something you'd expect. I mean, if we look at mine that I just did, 0 0.9 minus 0 0.8, divided by that standard deviation. For me, I was about 1.77 standard deviations above average. So like, while mine is a little unusual, not as unusual as Mr. Micah's 64% on his 50. So what we're gonna find out is based on this, we may have evidence to question whether or not Mr. Micah actually is a 80% um, free throw shooter. So what happens in a process on this one is, when I go to look at this, it's going to say each dot represents a proportion of free throws made out of 50. Is this correct? Um, what's this going to, sorry, not on the screen. One student says each dot represents a proportion of free throws made out of 50 free throw shots by Mr. Micah. Is this correct? Well, no, it's not because it's not Mr. Micah shooting. It's me simulating as if someone was an 80% free throw shooter. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at those percentage of the dots. And what we're going to say is whether or not we have evidence to question whether Mr. Micah is actually telling the truth about that. So again, if we want to kind of think about this, what we're trying to determine is we're trying to determine the following. Our true proportion, P naught, is the true proportion of free throws Mr. Micah would make. I'm trying to figure out the true proportions of free throws Mr. Micah would make out of 50. That's what we're really trying to figure out. Like we're trying to figure out what's the true proportion that he would make out of 50. So this is again, this is our, you know, stating our parameter, our P. And what we're going to learn in this case is we're going to learn the next thing we're going to do is we're going to state like a hypothesis. So in this question, what we're going to say is the null hypothesis is we're going to grant Mr. Mike his claim that he's an 80% free throw shooter. And what we are going to do is we're going to have an alternative 
what we're going to try and prove in the alternative is we're going to try and prove that he maybe is not and not an 80% free throw shooter, not an 80% free throw shooter. So this is, and is different. This is a two-sided test. And what we're going to go through and we're going to ask the question, we're going to say, hey, is this thing random? Well, theoretically taking free throws, we're just going to go with the assumption that, yeah, this is a random process. It's a random process. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and use P naught of 0.8 as my center. The next thing I'm going to check is independent. And independent is 10N. So it's 10 times 50. So it's 500. And then the question is, is that less than N? I am going to say that it's safe to assume an infinite number of free throw attempts. So what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to figure out that standard error that we talked about before. But I'm going to use the claim on that. So I'm going to do 1 minus P naught over N and plug in the numbers. So the standard error is going to be 0 0.8, 1 minus 0 0.8 over 50. And as we figured out, it's like 0 0.056. Next thing, so there's my random check. There's my independent check and then my large enough check. I'm going to do, did he get 10 successes or and 10 failures? based on the 80%. So what I'm going to say is if he were to take um, 50 free throws and he was an 80% free throw shooter, I'd expect him to make 40 of them. That's greater than or equal to 10. If he was a 40% or an 80% free throw shooter, I would expect him to miss 10 free throws. That's greater than or equal to 10. So what that tells me is I can do this thing and make it approximately normal. So what we're setting up is we're setting up a significance test. So now what we're going to do is we're going to what's called conduct a one sample test. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and draw ourselves a curve. So we're going to say that, you know, Mr. Mike could claim that he's an 80% free throw shooter. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to put that 80% in the middle because that's what he claimed. And then we're going to use that 5.6 uh, 5 standard deviation. So I'm going to do 0.8 plus 0 0.0566. So that's going to be 0 0.8566. I'm going to add it again. That's going to be 0 0.9132. I'm going to add it again. It's going to give me 0 0.9698. Now I'm going to subtract it 0 0.8 minus 0 0.0566. So this is going to be 0 0.07434 minus 0 0.0566. It's going to be 0 0.0 0 0.6868 minus 0 0.0566, 0 0.6302. So what we're going to say is based on the sample size of 50, so we're basing this on the sample size of 50, this is what the sampling distribution would look like. This is what I would expect an 80% free throw shooter to do out of 50 free throws. I would expect him, an 80% free throw shooter, to be somewhere in this range. So now, again, what we're going to do is we're going to put that 64% that he got on, on here. So, again, we're going to go and we're going to look at that 64% he got. Where would it be? 64% would probably be right about here. And I'm going to look at a two-sided test. So what that means is I'm going to look over here for 64%, but I'm, I'm going to look on the counter side for that same kind of range. So I'm actually going to look over here. So I want to look and see what is the range of these right here. Like, what is the probability? This is a two-sided test. This is that not equal to thing. What is it? And the way I'm going to figure it out is I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a z-score. And the way I take the z-score is I take Mr. Mike's shooting percentage. I subtract the 80. I divide it by that standard deviation I got, this thing here, the 0 0.8, 1 minus 0 0.8, divided by n. And I'm going to tell you I can do all of this in my calculator. We're going to do this next class. We do stat. We do tests. We're going to do number five, which is a one prop z test. He claims he's an 80% free throw shooter. He made 32 out of 50. 
I'm going to try and prove a difference. I'm going to calculate it. And what that's going to tell me is that um, this value is negative 2.828. And then there's this thing here called P. That's called a P value. We're going to talk again about that next class in a lot more detail. But that P value is 0 0.0047. So now what we're saying is, is that based on what I'm seeing here, if Mr. Micah was in fact, was in fact an 80% free throw shooter, the chances of him getting 64% or more extreme, so less or being up here and greater, is less than 1%. So what this tells me is I may have evidence to question Mr. Micah's claim. This is evidence to say that I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reject his claim that he's an 80% free throw shooter. I have evidence to support that he's not, that, that he's other, something other than an 80% free throw shooter. Most likely he's worse given the number being low, but since I'm doing a test of whether it's different, I don't need to say whether it's higher or whether it's lower. So that's the idea of where we're moving. Today is like a lot of vocabulary. So I really want you to focus on the vocabulary of null, null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, p-value. I really want you to kind of get your heads around those. We're gonna, we did some practice in class on hypotheses. I want you to get good at writing hypotheses um, and uh, using those because what we'll start on Thursday is we're going to go ahead and do our first uh, significance test. It's going to be a one sample significance test for true proportion. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do, it's like a gender discrimination ex, um, investigation to kind of see something. So that's what we'll be doing on uh, next class. Um, so my recommendation again is always keep doing the practices. Um, the, the, the quiz next time will cover um, a two sample proportion, but uh, a two sample proportion interval. And we'll spend two days on significance tests and kind of get it back up front. Um, we're going to spend two days doing a one sample test. We're going to spend a day doing a two sample test because once you spend two days on the one sample, the process for two sample is just one more sample. Um, and then we're going to get into something at the very end, the last day of class. We're going to talk about the types of mistakes you can make when you do this. And we're going to spend a day talking about this idea of type one error and type two error. Um, don't worry about it right now. We'll get there. But the, the process is, you know, this week, next week are really going to kind of run us through the, um, the end of tests. And then the following week, we'll kind of wrap it up and we'll be testing um, towards the end of the month on this stuff. So uh, hopefully that helped again. Ask me questions if you have them, shoot them in by email. I'm more than willing to help.